First, we talk about the balance of payments and exchange rates. The balance of payment is the record of the transaction of the residents of a country with the rest of the world. There are two main accounting is that any transaction that gives rise to a payment by a country's residents is the deficit item in the country balance of payment. The current account record trade in goods and service as well as tra- transfer payment service in coverage, royalty payment, and interest payment. Uh, transfer payment consists uh, of remittance, gift, and grants. The, tra- the trade balance simply records trade in goods. As you can see, this is the uh, recent data for the United States. Next, we talk about external account must balance. The deficit uh, that needs to be financed by selling asset or by borrowing abroad. Uh, this selling or borrowing implies the country is running a capital account surplus. This any current deficit is of necessity financed by an overseeing capital inflow. So, as you can see, there is a formula current account plus capital account. Equation 1 make the rest this point if a country has no asset to sell it has no foreign currency reserve to us to use up and if nobody will lend to it the country has to achieve balance uh, in its current account however painful and difficult that may be the increase if in official reserve is also called the overall balance of payment surplus we can summarize the discussion in the following statement like as you can see, there is the formula for equation 2. Next, exchange rates. How central bank through the official transaction finance or provide the means of paying for balance of payment surplus and deficit at the points we distinguish between fixed and floating exchange rate system. Next, fixed exchange rate. In the fixed exchange rate system for for agent central banks then ready to buy and sell the currencies at the fixed price in terms of dollars. In the 1960, for example, the German central banks central bank, the Bande, Bundesbank would buy or sell any amount of dollars ready to buy or sell any amount of dollars at for uh, 0.90 French French per US dollar. The fact that the central banks were pre- prepared to buy or sell any amount of dollars at this fixed price or exchange rate mean that market price will indeed be equal to the fa- fa- fixed rates. Why? Because nobody who wanted to buy US dollars will pay more than uh, 4.90 francs per dollars. When francs could be purchased at the price from the bank, the francs conversely, nobody will part uh, with dollars in exchange for francs for the less than 4.90 francs per dollar. Uh, if the bank, the francs through the commercial banking system was prepared to buy dollars at the price. Next, intervention. Intervention, uh, the buying or selling of foreign exchange by the central banks. The balance of payment measures that amount of foreign exchange infer- intervention needed from the central bank. For example, uh, if the United States were running a deficit in the balance of payment uh, pay- via uh, Japan and the, the demand, for a yen in exchange for dollar exceeded the supply of yen in exchange for dollar from Japanese the banks of Japan will buy the exchange excess dollar paying for them with yen next flexible exchange rates under fixed exchange rates the central bank have to provide whatever amounts of foreign currency are needed to finance payment imbalances 
floating clean and dirty in a system of clean floating central banks and stand aside completely and allow exchange rates to be freely determined in the foreign exchange markets since the central banks do not intervene in the foreign exchange market in such a system official uh, reserve transaction are according accordingly zero that means the balance of payment is zero in a system of cleaning floating uh, next terminology exchange rate language can be very confusing in particular the terms deprecation appreciation and revelation uh, recur in any de- discussion of international trade finance because the exchange rate of another it can be quoted two ways for example either is 106 yen per dollars or uh, 0.94 cent per yen as you can see the graph uh, figure uh, show that dollars yen exchange rate signs uh, 1957 the vertical axis show the exchange rate measure as the price of yen in USA dollars that that we show to swap periods the fixed rate period red period throughout uh, the 1960 uh, and lasting until 1972 and the flexible rate regime okay next exchange rate in the long run the real exchange rate is the ratio of origin domestic price measure that the same currency it measure a country competitive competitiveness in international trade the real exchange rate r is defined as as you can see there is a formula for equation 3 where p and pf are the price leave levels here and abroad respectively and is uh, and a is the dollars price of origin exchange not the signs pf rep- represent foreign price for example price measure in Dennis kroner and the exchange rate is measured as so many dollars per Dennis kron the numerator expressed price abroad relative to those at home okay next, next. Uh, as you can see the figure we show the cost of barley in England relative to that in Holland over a really long span on time. Barley is relative homogeneous commodity that is reasonable, transportable. You can see in the figure 2 that the real barley actions were trended toward equalization, but you can also see that there have been long periods of substantial deficient from equality the best current estimate for modern times uh, that it takes about four four years to reduce a de- deviation from ppp by half okay so now i'm going to explain about mandel fleming model in a perfect capital mobility under a fixed exchange rate what is mandel fleming model it is an extension of the ISLM model, which was formulated by the economist Robert Mandel and Marcus Fleming. Basically, we could say that the Mandel Fleming model is a version of the ISLM model for an open economy, in addition to the balance in goods and financial markets. The model incorporates an analysis of the balance of payments. Under fixed exchange rates and per capital mobility, a country cannot pursue an independent monetary policy. Interest rates cannot move out of the line with those prevailing in the world market. Any attempt at independent monetary policy leads to capital flows and a need to intervene until interest rates are back in line with those in the world market. An expansionary monetary policy will shift the LM curve to LM accent, which makes the equilibrium go from point E0 to point E1. However, since we are below the BP or um, balance of payment curve, we know the economy has a balance of payments deficit. Since the exchange rates are fixed, government intervention is required. The government 
will purchase domestic currency and sell foreign currency, which will drop the money supply and therefore shift the LM accent curve to its original position, which makes the equilibrium go to E2. An expansionary fiscal policy will shift the IS curve to IS accent, moving the equilibrium from point E0 to point E1. Since the economy has now a balance of payment surplus, and because the exchange rate is fixed, government will intervene in the exact opposite way. They will purchase foreign currency and sell domestic currency. This will increase the money supply and shifting the LM curve to the right. And the final equilibrium is reached at point E2 where at the same interest rate, production has increased greatly. The money supply is endogenous if we believe that the central bank sets the policy rate of interest. The level of money is determined by factors within the private sector. The root endo implies that it is an internal property. That is, the level of the money supply is determined within the model of the private sector. In this chapter, the essential point is that the commitment to maintain a fixed exchange rate makes the money stock endogenous because the central bank has to provide the foreign exchange or domestic money that is demanded at the fixed exchange rate. Thus, even when capital mobility is less than perfect, the central bank has only limited ability to change the money supply without having to worry about maintaining the exchange rate. In this table, it shows the effects of the fiscal expansion set off by German unification and the consequences for Germany's neighbors, whose exchange rates were fixed against the Dutch mark. The large fiscal expansion helped moderate the economic collapse in East Germany, but it came at the expense of a large budget deficit. The expansionary fiscal policy brought with it a deterioration, deterioration of the current account, higher interest rates, and an appreciation of the Dutch mark. As you can see in the table, during 1990, in 1991, the budget deficit and interest rate have an increase, but the current account experiencing a decrease. It is because the German resources were being redirected from supplying the world market to reconstructing East Germany. The German fiscal expansion had undesirable side effects on Germany's European trading partners, with whom Germany had a fixed exchange rate. In West Germany, the economy overheated since demand from the East fell mostly on the West German goods. In response to the overheating, the Bonds Bank tightened monetary policy, raising interest rates sharply. That is why in 1992, there is an increase in interest rate. Now I'm going to explain about perfect capital mobility and flexible exchange rate. So under the fully flexible exchange rate, the absence of intervention implies a zero balance of payments. Any current account deficit must be financed by private capital inflows and a current account surplus is, is balanced by capital outflows. Additionally, in the exchange rate, ensure that the sum of the current and capital account is zero. According to this curve, we can see that during the depreciation, the IS curve will shift to the right. Meanwhile, on appreciation, the curve will shift to the left. So. In a depreciation, the home country will become more competitive and it improves net, net exports, so the IS curve will shift to the right. Meanwhile, in the appreciation, our goods become relatively more expensive and the trade balance worsens and the demand for domestic goods declines. That is why the curve for appreciation will shift to the left. Increase in foreign demand implies an excess in demand for our goods. At the initial interest rate, exchange rate, and output level, demand for our goods now exceeds the available supply for goods market equilibrium at the initial interest rate and exchange rate. We require a higher level of output, and accordingly, the IS curve shifts to the right to IS accent. When the goods and money markets clear, the output has increased to meet increased demand. The rise in income has increased money demand and thus raised equilibrium interest rate. But point E accent is not an equilibrium because the balance of payment is not uh, in equilibrium. In fact, we will not reach point E accent at all. 
the tendency for the economy to move in that direction, as we now show, will bring about an exchange rate appreciation that will take us all the way back to the initial equilibrium. An expansionary monetary policy will shift the LM curve to the LM accent, which makes the equilibrium go from point E0 to point E1. But since now the exchange rates are, fr are flexible, we have a different situation. The balance of payments deficit will depreciate the domestic currency. This will increase the net exports. And since the foreigners can buy more of our products with the same amount of money, it will shift the IS curve to the right or become IS accent. And the final equilibrium will reach at point E2, where at the same interest rate, production had, has increased greatly. An expansionary fiscal policy will shift the IS curve to IS accent, moving the equilibrium from point E0 to point E1. The economy will have a balance of payment surplus. In this case of flexible exchange rate, it will appreciate the domestic currency. This will in decrease the net exports since we are able to import more goods and services with less money, while the foreigners will import less of our products because of our appreciated domestic currency. This drop in net exports will shift the IS accent curve back to its original position. And since now, the final equilibrium or E2 corresponds to the initial equi equilibrium. This table shows estimates of the quantitative impact of U.S. fiscal and monetary expansion on GNP in the United States and abroad under the flexible exchange rates. The table reports the percentage change in GNP over the first two years in response to two experiments. One is a sustained increase in government spending equal to 5% of GNP and the other is a monetary expansion of 10%. We need to note that the US GNP expands in each case. In line with our model, a US fiscal expansion raises foreign output. By contrast, a US monetary expansion reduces output abroad. The reason is that the dollar depreciates and that makes the rest of the world less competitive. What is bigger than ever? Bigger than ever policy refers to a policy that aims at addressing one's own domestic problems at the expense of others and trading partners in particular, largely through competitive devaluation of their currency by the central bank. Exchange rate changes within a group of countries experiencing similar shocks can only move demand among them and have a bigger day, bigger than never quality. This is one of the reasons why Europeans adopted a monetary union. From the point of view of an individual country, exchange depreciation works to attract world demand and raise domestic output. If every country tried to depreciate to attract world demand, we would have a competitive depreciation and a shifting around of world demand rather than an increase in the worldwide level of spending. And if everyone depreciated to roughly the same extent, we would end up with exchange rates about where they are, they are started. Coordinated monetary and fiscal policy rather than depreciations are needed to increase demand and output in each country when worldwide aggregate demand is at the world level.